Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. Arizona had their all-time record heat wave during June and early July 1974. I was a freshman at Arizona State University in 1974, and Phoenix had 18 consecutive days over 110 degrees. The average maximum temperature in Phoenix during June 1974 was 109 degrees, the hottest month they've ever had there. And from June 12th to June 29th, Phoenix was over 110 degrees every single day. I played on the ASU soccer team that year, and we had practice every day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But Phoenix didn't have the worst heat wave. A little bit west in Buckeye, they had 21 consecutive days over 110 degrees. And they had 25 days out of 26 over 110 degrees, with only July 2nd being a little bit below 110. 1974 was a very extreme year. On Christmas Day 1974, Darwin, Australia was destroyed by a cyclone. 90% of the homes in Darwin were destroyed, and the city had to be evacuated for over a year. And 1974 also brought the worst tornado outbreak in U.S. history. On April 3rd, 4th, 1974, there were at least 148 twisters in 24 hours. The extreme weather of 1974 was, of course, blamed on global cooling. The Guardian, Tuesday, January 29, 1974. Space satellites show new ice age coming fast. Time Magazine, June 24, 1974. Science, another ice age. Telltale signs are everywhere, from the unexpected persistence and thickness of pack ice in the waters around Iceland to the southward migration of a warmth-loving creature like the armadillo from the Midwest. Since the 1940s, the mean global temperatures dropped about 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. In Africa, drought continues for the sixth consecutive year, adding terribly to the toll of famine victims. During 1972, record rains in parts of the U.S., Pakistan, and Japan caused some of the worst flooding in centuries. As they review the bizarre and unpredictable weather pattern of the last few years, a growing number of scientists are beginning to suspect that many seemingly contradictory meteorological fluctuations are actually part of a global climatic upheaval. July 15, 1974. Drought, floods, blizzards, tornadoes, typhoons, and hurricanes have plagued much of the nation and the world in recent years. For the long run, there is mounting evidence of a worldwide cooling trend. Global cooling may be related to the devastating African drought now in its sixth year. The two most famous scientists at the National Center for Atmospheric Research here in Boulder, Colorado, were pushing global cooling very hard. Wednesday, June 12, 1974, Boulder, Colorado. Observers of the global climate at the National Center for Atmospheric Research believe the favorable weather of the past 15 years is about to give way to a period of unstable climate, crop losses, food shortages, and death by starvation for millions. Underlying Schneider's ideas on food shortages is the knowledge that the world is moving into a period of cooler temperatures. That's Stephen Schneider on the left, and Dr. Walter Orr Roberts on the right, the first director of the National Center for Atmospheric Research. And this is the global temperature graph which the National Center for Atmospheric Research published in 1974, which showed 1970 cooler than 1870, with a very sharp cooling trend from 1940 to 1970. In 1974, the CIA put out a global cooling report which said, Grave food shortages would tempt powerful but hungry countries to obtain grain by any means they could. Massive migrations from one country to another, sometimes backed by force, would be a live issue, and consequently political and economic instability would be widespread, the report said. Australia's Communist Weekly warned in 1974 that if sufficient action isn't taken against global cooling in the next few months, countries could disappear from the face of the earth. On August 8, 1974, the New York Times reported that there was unanimous consensus that the world's food output was threatened. A recent meeting of climate experts in Bonn, West Germany, produced the unanimous conclusion that the change in global weather patterns poses a severe threat to agriculture that could lead to major crop failures and mass starvation. And in 1974, they blamed the polar vortex on global cooling. Monday, June 24, 1974, Scientists have found other indications of global cooling. For one thing, there's been a noticeable expansion of the great belt of dry, high-altitude polar winds, the so-called circumpolar vortex, that sweep from west around the top and bottom of the world. The New York Times reported the same thing in 1978. An international team of specialists has concluded from eight indexes of climate that there is no wind in sight to the cooling trend of the last 30 years, at least in the northern hemisphere. 
a gradual increase in the area of this northern circumpolar vortex, the massive flow of frigid air around the Arctic has been recorded by Drs. Angel and Kirschover. But now everything's changed, and climate scientists angrily blame the polar vortex on global warming and President Trump. Trump's team is already planning to cut global warming research at NASA. As winter approaches, we'll likely see more reality-challenged senators bring in snowballs to the floors of Congress and say, what global warming, every time a cold snap arrives, even though a lot of the brutal polar vortex conditions are actually tied to the effects of global warming. So in 1974, the polar vortex was caused by global cooling, but now it's of course caused by global warming. And they've erased the post-1940 global cooling. The black line is the 1974 NCAR graph, and the red line is the current NASA graph. They didn't like the post-1940 global cooling, so they simply made it disappear. Climate scientists have also erased the global cooling scare from the history books. This article from Scientific American in 2014 said the entire global cooling scare consisted of one article in Newsweek in 1975. Another thing that happened in 1974 was the Arab oil embargo. This led to gas shortages in the United States and massive gas lines of people trying to fill up at the gas station. The musician Lindsey Buckingham's father died of a massive heart attack waiting to get gas at a gas line in California in 1974. All this suited globalists just fine. John Holdren, who went on to be Obama's science advisor, has been trying to shut down the U.S. energy supply for decades. He wrote in 1975, the United States is threatened far more by the hazards of too much energy too soon than by the hazards of too little too late. I remember the gas lines of 1974, and we have to make sure that these climate lunatics never take power in the United States again. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.